Sir Humphrey Davy, first baronet, was a Cornish chemist and inventor born in Penzance, Cornwall in 1778, the eldest son of Robert Davy, a woodcarver, and his wife, Grace Millet. Sir Humphrey became an apprentice to a surgeon named John Bingham Borlass in 1794, and he became a chemist for an apocryphary. He conducted experiments at his home to the annoyance of his friends and family. His older sister complained that his corrosive substances were destroying her dresses, and a friend of his complained that Davy would eventually blow us all into the air. In 1802, Davy created the first incandescent light by passing an electric current through a strip of platinum. It was not bright enough, making it impractical for use, but nevertheless, the principle was demonstrated. Davy also experimented with the inhalation of nitrous oxide along with several of his scientist friends. They even combined it with wine in an effort to create a cure for a hangover. Davy noted the gas might be used for performing surgical operations. He nicknamed it laughing gas as he was astounded at its ability to make him laugh. Davy wrote the following regarding one of the experiences he had inhaling the gas. The moment after I began to respire 20 quarts of unmingled nitrous oxide, a thrilling extending from the chest to the extremities was almost immediately produced. I felt a sense of tangible extension highly pleasurable in every limb. My visible impressions were dazzling and apparently magnified. I heard distinctly every sound in the room and was perfectly aware of my situation. By degrees, as the pleasurable sensations increased, I lost all connection with external things. Trains of vivid, visible images rapidly passed through my mind and were connected with words in such a manner as to produce perceptions perfectly novel. When I was awakened from this semi-delirious trance by Dr. Kinglake, who took the bag from my mouth, indignation and pride were the first feelings produced by the sight of the persons about me. I endeavored to recall the ideas that were feeble and indistinct. One collection of terms, however, presented itself, and with the most intense belief and prophetic manner, I exclaimed to Dr. Kinglake, Nothing exists but thought, and the universe is composed of impressions, ideas, pleasures, and pains. In 1812, Davy gave up his lecturing position at the Royal Institute and was knighted in the same year. He married Jane Apries, a rich heiress and socialite, and traveled with her. Davy went to France to receive a medal Napoleon awarded him for his work in electrochemistry. Although he did not meet Napoleon, his party did meet with Empress Josephine during his stay. Next, Davy traveled to Florence, Rome, and Milan. He returned to England in 1815 and began developing a lamp that could be safely used in a coal mine. Reverend Dr. Robert Gray of Bishop Wearmouth, founded, who was the founder of the Society for Preventing Accidents in Coal Mines, wrote to Davy soliciting his help. Tragic mine explosions were caused by fire damp, a mixture of methane and oxygen, which would get ignited by the open flames of the lamps 
miners' use while working. The Falling Mine Disaster near Newcastle, which killed 92 men, had occurred only a few years earlier. Davy's solution was to use an iron gauze to enclose the lamp's flame, as to prevent the methane from escaping into the air. It consisted of a wick lamp with the flames enclosed inside of a mesh screen. Davy was awarded a baronetcy on October 20th, 1818. An excerpt from the London Gazette states, His Royal Highness, the Prince Regent, has been pleased, in the name and on the behalf of His Majesty, to direct letters patent to be passed under the Great Seal of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, for granting the dignity of a baronet of the said United Kingdom to Sir Humphrey Davy of Grosvenor Street, Hanover Square, in the county of Middlesex, Knight, Doctor of Laws, and to the heirs male of his body lawfully begotten. Davy died in Geneva, Switzerland, on May 29, 1829. He wished to be buried where he died, but he also wanted the burial delayed in case he was only comatose and not fully dead. He refused to allow a post-mortem because of similar fears. Davy's laboratory assistant, Michael Faraday, would go on to become the more famous and influential scientist. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and share. Thank you.